came to fight in Lebanon, they were Muslims coming from Egypt, from Syria, from Saudi Arabia, from Iraq, from Iran, from all over the Arabic world, to fight the Christians, to control the Christians in Lebanon, and to create a terror base from which to fight Israel and then launch their attacks against the West. During that bombing, my mother became wounded and we had to take her to an Israeli hospital for treatment. For my mother, it was a life-saving experience. For me, it was a life-changing experience because we ended up going to Israel. And up to that point, I knew that the Israelis were saving our lives. We were alive because of the Israeli army protecting us. But when we went to Israel, that's when I realized that we are truly fighting a clash of civilization between the West and the East, the Judeo-Christian values and the Muslim Arabic values. We were in the hospital in Israel, and there were hundreds of people wounded on the floor. And I remember looking around and seeing the Israeli soldiers and the Israeli doctors treat everybody according to their injuries. I could not believe my eyes. There were Muslims brought in from Lebanon, Palestinian terrorists brought in from Lebanon, Israeli soldiers, Christians. I could not believe my eyes. I said to myself, I can understand why the Israelis are treating me. I am their friend. I am their ally. I am their buddy. I am their buffer zone. But why the heck are they treating the Muslims and the Palestinians? Little did I know about the values and the character of the Israeli people. The doctors treated everyone according to their injury. They did not see religion. They did not see political affiliation. They did not see nationality. They saw people in need and they helped. The doctor treated my mother before he treated the Israeli soldier laying next to her. I could not believe my eyes. They took us to the fourth floor of the hospital, and we were not there but maybe five minutes. And I remembered the commotions of people running through our room, through the nurse's station, through our room, and out to the balcony to see what was happening. And I remember walking out to the balcony and looking down to see what all this noise was all about. And I saw two Israeli helicopters that just landed, bringing in Israeli soldiers wounded from Lebanon. And they were carrying them on stretchers into the emergency room. And I stood at that balcony feeling sick to my stomach, feeling brokenhearted, feeling ashamed, feeling embarrassed, feeling out of place, because I knew that these people were wounded because of the war with my country. I didn't even look at anyone standing around me. There were hundreds of people around me, mothers and fathers and sisters and daughters and sons and brothers of Israeli soldiers wounded in the war in Lebanon. And all of a sudden, I felt this tapping on my shoulder. And I looked to my side, and there was an Israeli nurse standing next to me. And she looks at me, and she said, you are new here, aren't you? And I said, yes, they just brought in my mother. She's in this room. And this lady puts her arm around me, and she holds me and looks into my eyes and she says, don't worry, we'll take good care of her. Everything will be just fine. And if you need anything, just call my name. My name is Leah. I'll never forget that name. I was so touched. I was, for the first time in my life, I experienced civilization. I experienced compassion. I experienced the human quality that I knew for fact my culture will not be able to show their enemy in their most trying moments. I knew the Israelis had something even I did not have. They were able to love and forgive their enemy, the Palestinians, in a way I wasn't able to, and I was the Christian who was supposed to love and forgive like Jesus taught. I spent 22 days in that hospital. Those days changed my life, changed the way I look at information, changed the way I read information, I watch television, I listen to the radio, because I realized that in the Arabic world, the Arabs are fed a fabricated lie by their governments about the Jews and Israel that is so far from reality. I spent 22 days in that hospital. Those days changed my life. I remember one of the ladies in the room with us, we were, my mother was in the room with two other Muslim ladies. And one Muslim lady who's been there for 10 days, and the doctors would come in their morning rounds and they would check the wounded and they would treat them and they would look at her and they would change her bandage and they would check on her. And when they would leave the room, she would look at them and she would say, I hate you all. I wish you were all dead. And for the first time in my life, I saw evil. Evil. Because when you are unable to be grateful for those people who saved your life, you have no soul. You have no conscience. You have just crossed a fine line that's very ugly on the other side. And I started realizing that Muslims 
teach their children hatred from their mother's milk. While we Christians and Jews talk about love, talk about compassion, talk about forgiveness, read our Bible, listen to what Jesus said. They have a completely different idea of understanding and completely different way of thinking than we do. I had to leave Israel because I had to go back to Lebanon and take care of my parents because I'm an only child and they had no one to take care of them and they were old. But I vowed that one day I will return to Israel, that one day I will come back and live amongst those people whose values I respected, whose characters I wanted to adopt, whom I admired. I was so blessed to be able to return to Israel two years later and so fortunate to be able to become news anchor for world news in the Middle East, covering world events and meeting with world figures from Margaret Thatcher to Ishaq Rabin to Ishaq Shamir to George Bush Sr., you name it. I was so blessed to be able to land the dream job. And in my job as news anchor for world news, I had to report on world events on a nightly basis and I would cover world events, and I was able to read information and evaluate information that was not filtered through the Arabic propaganda filters that Arabs are oblivious to. And as I reported on the news every night, I started seeing a pattern developing. The pattern was, with all the terrorist attacks around the world, all over the Western world, the name of the perpetrators were always the same. Different geography, same names. Ahmed, Muhammad, Hussein, Ali. The name of the victims were always Christians and Jews, Westerners. Terry Waite, Terry Anderson, Colonel Higgins, Tim Ken Timmerman, the Akili Lauro, the TWA. The list goes on and on. And I started realizing, I started connecting the dots, and I started realizing that what I used to think was a regional problem between the majority Muslims in the Middle East who have declared holy war on the minority Christians and Jews have become a worldwide problem. Sadly, no one in the world was paying attention. They always gave in an excuse. The Achille Lavra was just a special excuse. The Palestinian conflict was just a Palestinian-Israeli conflict. The Lebanese war was just a civil war. Our government in the United States today put every circumstance in a different department and closed the door. They didn't connect the dot and realize we are fighting an Islamic Jihad that's spreading all around the world. So here we are today in America. September 11th woke Americans up. September 11th made Americans wake up and say, why do they hate us? What did we do to offend them? What did we do to make them hate us so much? I have two easy words for you because you are infidels. That's simply why they hate you. People do not realize that under the banner of Islam, la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, there is no God greater than Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. The Muslims murdered Jewish children in Israel. They massacred Christians in Lebanon. They killed Copts in Egypt, Assyrians in Syria, Hindus in India, Armenians in Turkey, and expelled over 900,000 Jews out of Arab land. All that happened before they ever came to America. Nobody wanted to pay attention. The bombing of our embassies in Africa, the bombing of the Kubar Towers in Saudi Arabia, the USS Cole, the bombing of the World Trade Center the first time in 1993. Nobody paid attention. The only difference between the attacks of 1993 and 2001 is the buildings didn't come down. That's the only difference. The World Trade Center buildings did not come down in 1993. It was a failed attack. And you would think we would have paid attention. Our FBI, after they made their arrest and started confiscating computers from uh, the sheikhs to read what the computers were, they put it all in boxes. They found so many papers and so many religious papers. They put it all in boxes and put it away, calling it irrelevant religious material. Al-Qaeda manuals, irrelevant religious material. Nobody looked at it. Nobody paid attention. They treated it like a police crime. And then we had September 11th. And then America opened its eyes up. And today, as you and I are speaking, we have terrorist organizations that have set up shop on American soil right here. They are living amongst us. They are working with us.